nomenclature. So you'll notice anytime we start talking about different molecules in this unit, I always have a section called nomenclature. And nomenclature is just how to name them. Okay, they have completely different rules for naming than we do for inorganic molecules or any binary uh, atomic molecules that we've, that we've found before. So completely different naming. IUPAC is the like association that comes up with all these rules. So they had to have some rules to keep everything consistent and they are the ones that decided how to do this. So if you don't like the naming structure, I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about it. So this is how alkanes are named or really anything. It's gonna have three parts to it. If it has a prefix, a base name and a suffix, okay? Prefix means before, suffix means after, right? So the prefix is any substituent. So a substituent is any group that is attached to the longest chain of carbons. So if I was looking at these molecules up here, this one has no substituents. This is my longest carbon chain is five carbons. Everything on the outside is a hydrogen. In isopentane, however, I have one, two, three, four carbons in a row. And then this carbon here actually has a carbon bonded to it. So we're kind of ignoring the hydrogens. The hydrogens are whatever. Um, so this is four in a row with one substituent off of it. This one, I have three carbons in a row. That's my longest carbon chain. And this carbon here has two carbons off of it or two carbon substituents. So substituents are things that are connected to the longest chain of carbons. Okay. Your base is based on how many carbons are on that longest chain. So if I was looking at this isopentane here, I would be like, this has one, two, three, four carbons in a row. That is the longest chain. Now the chain can bend, okay? So keep that in mind, but I wanna know how many carbons I can count in a row. So I could go one, two, three, four, or I could go one, two, three, four. There's four carbons in a row, no matter how you count it, okay? These would not be in a row. You can't go like up and then back. Over here, I only have three carbons in a row. I have one, two, three, or you could count it this way, one, two, three, or you could count it this way, one, two, three, however you want to do it. It doesn't matter because all of those single bonds are rotatable, uh, but it's three carbons in a row with two substituents on it. So the base for this one is pen. This one is four carbons. So you remember the four one, Mary, it's peanut butter, is butane. And this one only has three, which is a propane or prop. So this is five pent, this is four bute, this is three prop. That's the base. And then the suffix is the family that it's in. So currently we are talking about alkanes. So the ending is a, okay? So this one is just pentane, five carbons all in a row, no substituents. This one is four carbons in a row. It is an alkane because it's all single bond. So I would call this butane, and I haven't taught you how to do substituents, but you'll notice down here it says 2-methylbutane. That's like the IUPAC name. Over here, I have three carbons in a row, which would be propane, and it has two substituents. You'll notice down here I got 2-2-dimethyl. I'll talk about the substituents in a minute. Propane. Okay, so the base is the number of carbons in a row, and the suffix is whatever family we are talking about. Now, how do I name these substituents? Okay. So these are our, we're going to start with alkyl groups because these are the most common substituents. Alkyl groups are just carbon groups, okay? So alk means carbons, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, right? Um, alkyl groups. So a one carbon group is a methyl group. A two carbon group is an ethyl group. A one, two, three carbon group is a propyl group. And a four carbon group is a, oh, we're not doing four. Um, this is a propyl group and this is an isopropyl group, still three carbons, but it's attached by the middle carbon. So when we're looking at our groups, that's what those are called. So these are called alkyl substituents or carbon substituents. So if I was looking up here at this, this molecule, I have four carbons in a row and this carbon has an alkyl substituent called a methyl. Okay, so naming rules. First, find the longest consecutive chain of carbons. Remember, it can bend. They just have to be in a row. Okay, try to get as many carbons as you can in that counting of the chain. You want it to be as long as possible because that makes your naming easier. It's a good thing. Number two, number your carbons from the end um, where there's closest to end, what is this? Oh, nearest. 
nearest the first substituent. Really, the rule is we want to have as low numbers as possible. So if I am looking at this molecule up here, okay, um, I would number my four carbons, one, two, three, four. Now, I did not go backwards because my substituent, if I count this way, is on carbon two. If I count the other way, it's on carbon three, one, two, three. And I don't want that. I want the numbers to be as low as possible. So I would start here. I would say carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. Okay, so I numbered my carbons. Then you want to list the substituents as a prefix. So remember, I said this is a methyl group. Okay, so we're going to list that methyl group as a prefix with the carbon number they are attached to. So again, looking at my example, this carbon, this methyl group is attached to carbon number two. That's why this is called 2-methyl. That's where the methyl group is. Butane, that is my longest chain. Okay, so if uh, there's more than one substituent, you do have to list the multiple numbers and you like where they are. And you also have to say di, tri, tetra, or like however many of those substituents there are. So let's look at this other one over here. Okay, this still five carbon molecule, but they're not all attached. So I have three in a row. So that means my base is pro, my suffix is ane. So it's going to end in propane. I have two substituents. So I have a methyl group here and I have a methyl group here on carbon number. If I numbered these, it would be one, two, three. So both of those substituents are on carbon number two. And so I have two methyls on carbon two. So what I have to do is I have to list the number two both times, telling you that both of those methyls are on carbon two. So I say two, two, dimethyl, because there are two methyls, propane. So this molecule is two, two, dimethyl propane. Okay. If you have multiple substituents, say I have a methyl and an ethyl and a propyl or something like that, you want to list the substituents in alphabetical order. So not the number of carbons, alphabetical order. So if I had a methyl and an ethyl, I would list the ethyl first. We're gonna do a lot of practice with this. There's a lot of practice online as well. Okay. So name each of the following alkanes. I am going to walk through each of these with you. Um, if you want to try by yourself, you can go ahead and pause and give it a shot, but I am going to walk through each one. Okay, so I have this molecule here. I numbered it starting at this end because this is where I have my substituents at. I have a CH3 here and a CH3 here. So I counted the carbons. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means my end of my name is going to be hex sub six ane because I have all single bonds. So hexane. Now I have to figure out what the beginning is. What are those substituents? So I number them this way. I have a methyl group, one carbon, on the second carbon. And I have a methyl group on the third carbon. So I would say two, three. You do put a dash in between them. So numbers and then a dash. Dimethyl, because it is two methyl groups, hexane. Okay. This one underneath, okay? I'm going to look at the one underneath here. Remember, carbon chains can bend. You just want to get as many carbons in a row as possible. So you'll notice I started over here at this as my carbon one. Why? Well, first of all, I want as many as possible. So if you follow this chain, that will get eight carbons. If I started right here, I would just have one, two, three, four, five, six or seven, depending on which way you go, you want as many as possible. So I started over here. Now, the reason I started numbering over here is because if I number this way, I have two substituents on carbon three. If I went the other way, I would have two substituents on carbon, what would that be, six. So I just want the numbers to be as low as possible. So I started over here. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means my end is gonna be octane. Now for the substituents. Well, if this was my chain, I have to look at everything that was attached to it. So I have a methyl here, a methyl here, and a methyl here. They were not part of the longest chain. So I have two methyls on carbon three. So I would say three, three. I have one on six. So three, three, six dash trimethyl because they are three methyls octane. Okay, up here. Um, this one was a hexane. If you count, you can either count all the way this way or you can count and to bend this way. Either way, you're going to get six carbons in a row. There is a methyl on carbon two. There is an ethyl, right? This is a CH2 group. Or if you counted straight across, this is also an ethyl on carbon four. So this would be four ethyl, two methyl hexane. 
Remember, they go by alphabetical order. So ethyl comes before methyl. So 4-ethyl, 2-methylhexane. Remember, the dashes separate any numbers and words or prefixes. And finally, this one. This one's really bendy. So I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, I went this way because that gave me 8. If I only went this way, I would get 5. If I went this way, I would get six. Oh no, seven. This is the longest chain. So sometimes you have to really like look and count, try to get as many carbons. You're trying to like get as many in one name as possible. So I got eight in total, which means I'm going to end in octane. And then I'm going to look at all my groups. Okay. Well, there's a methyl on carbon two. There's a methyl on carbon four. And on carbon five, I have this group. Now this is a three. So this is a propyl group, but is it just and propyl, regular propyl, normal propyl, or isopropyl is the one that's connected in the middle. Right, so if you go back up to these, right, propyl is connected on the end, and isopropyl is connected in the middle, three carbons connected in the middle. And so I list this as 5-isopropyl, 2,4-dimethyl octane. Notice I put isopropyl before dimethyl, you might be like, well, that's not in alphabetical order. When you do alphabetical order, the prefix on your substituents does not count. So we're doing isopropyl comes before methyl. That's why I put them in that order. So when you're doing your, <clears throat> excuse me, alphabetical order, the prefixes for the number of them does not count. So it's five isopropyl, two, four, because that's where my methyls are, dimethyl, octane. 